So, a la the most important story of the week, which is no, it's not the scientists have confirmed that we need a carbon tax that reaches $27,000 by the year 2100. It's not even the fact that Australia was about to sign the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which by the way, thank you for everybody who signed the petition, Labor's back down, they're going to get rid of the ISCS clause of manufacturing points. That's incredible. But anyway, enough about politics. We've got a whole channel devoted to that and me making fun of a Turkish guy that used to go to my school. It's such a weird channel. Anyway, but which, which one of these aren't? They're all freakish in their own way. Some may say they're mad. I personally think that they're brilliant. All right, so anyway. <laughs> all right, so here's, here's what we've got to do. Uh, we've got to be talking about the other big story this week, which is that they're putting ads on the Opera House now and it's a piece of art. How could they do this? That's what you care about? Again. Really scary news about climate change, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Oh my god, that is a sacred building! Putting jockey colours on it that are kind of nice if you think about it anyway. I, I, I can't stand this! 270,000 signatures on the petition! You know how many of these signatures the Trans-Pacific Partnership petition got by the way? About 3,000. And that was enough to change huge trade deals in, in, that, that are happening around an entire Pacific Rim region of the planet. That was enough. But 270,000 signatures, yeah, good work. You got Alan Jones to go, all right, maybe I went a bit far. And I didn't think he went far enough. Frankly, I think the Opera House should apologize to him. It should have on those sales, weekdays with Alan Jones, breakfast on 2GB, advertised on it for the next week. Th th their slogan is pretty much white anyway. So, the thing that, I need, that it actually started to make me think about when it came to this opera house debacle was why do people care so much about it? And then, I, and then it just hit me. This is a point in self-help. It always is a point in self-help. There's, there's always just clickbait to get you in. Did you know that, by the way? If you don't, well, you're about to be very acquainted with that if you click on literally any other video on this. But the thing is, what they're talking about in the opera house debacle, symbolism matters. Remember the old expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's factually true. Factually. <laughs> but the point is that it's, it's much more important to instill images on the public's mind than it is to make a cogent argument in writing. And why is that? Because the brain thinks in pictures. Now think about how that affects you for a minute. That means, this is why you see all these things that are always conflated in those documentaries like, what the bleep do we know? And, uh, the secret. I don't know why I'm saying it, those things I genuinely like both of them. Probably if you ask me what my favourite movies of all time, it'd be that. And of course, the smash hit American Pie 4 Bandcamp, straight to DVD. Good stuff. But the thing is, when it came to, uh, to, uh, th th this... <laughs> when it came to uh, advertising on, on the Opera House, the reason that that upset people more than the Trans-Pacific Partnership is A, the Trans-Pacific Partnership is written in legal jargon on purpose to confuse people, so they're not even going to read it in the first place. It's my job to read these things. I couldn't get through it. It was honestly like when you pick up one of those books on physics going, wow, the secrets of the universe, and then you just laugh because you don't understand 40% of the words that are on the page. It's It's designed purposefully to obfuscate people from reading it. How much more attention grabbing is it and how much stupider do you need to be to register on that bill? But that's the opera house! It's a special ads on it! Sell out! It's pretty much all of Triple J's audience just yelling at Sell out! That's all you need to know about it to get upset about it. Because it's desecrated a sacred symbol in your head. This is why so much emotion can be registered into an image. You use the most stock standard one that I hate using because it's just so cliche, but the swastika. <laughs> if you go to, if you go to, you know, Buddhist societies, they don't see it the same way that we do. And why is that? Because of the meaning behind it. So all of the meaning is projected into one symbol. Think about how much emotional weight that carries. It's no joking matter. Now, did you laugh about this? No, that's it, get outside. Get outside and you can come back when you get the giggles out of your system. <laughs> How much was that? What always happened in I don't know if you were, but honestly, if you had a mild form of ADD, which is, let's be honest, I probably have that, just haven't been diagnosed for it. But the thing is, when someone says something where they're just going, let's just be very serious at 
the moment in school. That, that, that is guaranteed to make you go And then you feel like Anne Frank in the basement. It's getting harder and harder to keep it in. Once, you want, once you're not allowed to laugh in a situation where you can't laugh, it gets much, much harder not to laugh. You're the real monsters. Uh, so anyway, when it comes to symbolism, when it comes to images in your mind, when it is videos like What the Bleep, then we're like, oh, that was a while ago. In videos like What the Bleep do we know, they talk about how athletes imagine themselves winning a race. Why do they do that? Because the brain, in a lot of ways, can't tell the difference between what you've actually experienced and what it imagines. This is why when people are getting interrogated by cops and they go, you killed her, didn't you? Now you went in there, you went in there with a hammer. I didn't even know there was a hammer involved. Well, no, you did because you were there. Oh, did I? Yeah. And then you smacked her in the head. Oh, that's really bad. Why would I do that? But the thing is because they're constantly, they're very certain about it. There's a lot of other factors involved in this. It's, you know, sleep deprivation. It's uh, being a master interrogator. But a major thing is that if you keep talking about the event in graphic detail, it puts the image in your head. And if you've been deprived of sleep, you sit there and you go, oh, Maybe I did do that then. Why would I smack my own mum in the head with a hammer? Is it because she didn't give me pop tarts again? And then you go to jail. That's a problem with the justice system. I think it's somewhat getting corrected at this point, but this is actually a massive thing where whenever you're in a case, by the way, and they say to you, come in for this interrogation, you go, man, you gotta sign some papers, baby. You gotta get that. It's very important. So you know, just, just in case you ever kill anyone in the future, right? This is a self-help channel, by the way. If you kill anyone in the future, make sure that you get every document signed. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> so symbolism, the thing is that because your brain reacts to images more than it reacts to words, more than it reacts to sound. This is why more people watch video content in the net is moving towards the trajectory of having more video content on it. They think that within, I think by the year 2020, 80% of the internet will just be videos. Very little of it will be articles, which is terrible for information because nobody's reading it. And it's much easier to spread propagation of lies and whatnot because you are using images and, no, and everyone just goes, yeah, well, I saw it in the documentary, so that's to be true. And they don't ever bother to read even articles, let alone reports. So. It moves a lot of filters away from that, but it doesn't matter. The point is that the human brain responds to this. So how does this benefit you? Well, think about it. If you're ever selling something, if you're ever in public presentation, why is Paul Keating so memorable? Mostly it's because he put metaphors into the mind of the public. He was also just a wit with words, but one of his big secrets, and he talks about this, is that he really liked being able to put an image into the mind of the public to get really complicated ideas, and that's the advantage of it. You can, it's a tool like anything else. It can be used for good or evil. Think about th 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 that. So he goes and explains really complicated matters to the public and also attacks the opposition at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone. A classic example is when John Howard came up and said, who gave us the greatest recession in, in the last 30 years? Paul Keating. And he stands up and goes, yeah, but what you seem to forget, mate, is that you were responsible for the last recession before that. And why is that? The, the difference between you and me, John, no, no, the difference between you and me is that I could pull a lever and get us right back out of this recession. I put us in there. I know how to get us out. You, on the other hand, mate, when you were pulling the levers, it was like an old Bonnie and Hardy skit. You'd pull the wheel and it'd go rap, straight off the dashboard. You'd try and stop the car with the brake and that'd fall off right in your hand. What does that do? It puts into the mind of the public that he knows what he's doing. He's putting us in a recession because it's going to have a benefit later on. But John Howard, on the other hand, is completely clueless and that's why he was in a recession. It's different interpretations of that. I obviously 100% agree with Paul Keating because I'm pretty much what most people are just being like, oh my god, Drake, best rapper of all time. Sounds like an elevator with a really slow beat in the background with somebody just being like, mm, I'm really sad again. I've been sad for the last four albums. But that, except for I'm like, Paul Keating's the best. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But honestly, honestly, you go and look at any economist, they will tell you the same thing. Paul Keating set the mark for what a good treasurer is. One best treasurer in the world. Who else won one? Wayne's won. How many liberal treasurers won any? Oh, that's right. Big fat zero. Best economic managers? I don't think so. So with you, whenever you're presenting or you're talking to someone, if you want to engage them, 
If you want to be on the same page, if you want to communicate your ideas better, just think about this. Symbolism matters. Try and implant images in the person's mind. There was a game, and it always goes to Roman and Greek philosophers. I can't remember who they are, but one of them said it, which was that when you see chariot, a chariot comes out of your mouth. Always remember that. Images trump. And actually, now that I say that, I was going to finish on images Trump wording, but I'm going to have to point this out as well. Donald Trump, what does he do? Every time he ever, a, a really good example of that during the election campaign was when everyone started going, Trump's stakes aren't even going anymore. He's always talking about how successful Trump's stakes are. So what did he do? He came out and goes, as you can see, we've got some beautiful Trump stakes right here. He puts the image in front of everybody's mind. That is genius. Instead of just everyone going, Trump strikes don't exist, Trump strikes don't exist. Nowhere near as powerful as going, well, what's this right here? Eh? Eh? Second date vegans? Psh. Smack some CNN reporter cut soy boy in the face. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you probably sometime later this week. I'm going to start uploading to this more because I realise, oh, wait, this channel doesn't require fucking anything. <laughs> it's so much easier. I'm H3H3 again. See you around.